Well, welcome to the video. This is one of those photos here. And this is a response video to the map deck video where he's talking about moving on. Now, when he refers to moving on, he means moving on from rim brake to disc brake and also from moving on from the many, many bottom bracket standards to the newer adopted standards like the T47 and also the going back <laughs> in time to the BSA fretted bottom brackets. So that... I can understand his argument and he puts a very good strong argument forward but there is another argument which is on the flip side of that coin that i would like to canvas so let's write the intro and let's have a bit of a talk about the his views and my views on this topic of moving on MapDeck basically argues that from his vision of what he's doing, he's seeing that there's so many standards out there. We have rim brakes and there's, all, there's direct mount and there's single mount and there's different sizes for bigger tyres and there's all the iterations from all of the different models and also then you have a completely different bike, different standard. This doesn't fit. You have different wheels. You have problems with braking and overheating of the rims and with disc brakes, then they've even got two standards and he says that we should drop the 140, have only the 160 and that's a direct mount, not a post mount. And also he talks about the bottom brackets with all of the many bottom bracket standards we have going to just a few and simplifying the whole thing. And why that's good for him is because he can keep less stock on the shelf and when people come in and also it's easier to change things from bike to bike and put this piece on that bike and so forth. So his argument is has a lot of strength and it has a lot of depth of his reasons why he would like to do that but that's fine when you're working in a bike environment and you're seeing bikes come in and you're having to service all those bikes and you're having all of these different types of standards that you may need to stock you might need to order you need to put them on you need to have to know all the knowledge of all these different things and that argument is has merit but on the other side of the coin if you look at it from a consumer point of view it's not such a great argument because what he's saying is, is that we all need to update to the standards. Now, if I was doing that, I've got two bikes that are rim brake bikes. Now, nothing on those bikes will be compatible with the new bikes. Absolutely zero. I have to basically get rid of sell all my old bikes or put them or chuck them out and put them into landfill. And then even if I sell them, someone else has the same issue of when they get to get it serviced to have those parts serviced on those bikes. So even though they've got a cheaper bike, they still may go back to a bike shop, i.e. Lake Baptic, and say, hey, look, I just bought these bikes secondhand. I got them really cheap. I just want to have it serviced and this replacing that replacing. And he goes, oh, right. Okay. Well, that's that old technology that I don't really want to stock. So that's the first issue that are you really going to get rid of this old tech or is it still going to be kicking around for some time because people at different budgets and price points will buy into the market who want a good quality bike? And then if we go back to me, right, for me, once I've sold these bikes, okay, I've got some cash in my hand. I have to go out and if I want to buy an equivalent bike, say 10K US, buy my bike, I might buy another bike, a rain bike, a cheaper bike. So I've had to invest a considerable amount of money to get into this new tech. Now, if we look back historically and we look at the changing of all this technology, really it's not the fact that this technology is actually being invented and normally stays. There's a lot of technology out there that they've gone to and then they've gone away from. So if we look at the bike industry of a whole, the, the manufacturers are the one that is driving change. They want to bring out new tech. They want to change things. They want to go from you know, an external cabled handlebar system to an integrated handlebar system. Now, we could argue that gives some performance, but what it does is it locks out the old technology. It's the same when you go to disc brakes. It locks out the rim brake technology. All the wheels and everything don't fit. And also, now that they're going to electric, 
it's locking out the mechanical group sets. So it's okay to say, let's move on. But how do we know if we move on to what's the latest today, that in five years' time, there's not going to be new technologies the manufacturers are bringing out like they have done in the past because they want to drive proprietary products. They want to drive change. So it makes the old products obsolete and and keeps us spending money because that's what they want in reality. Because let's face it, a bicycle is a very simple thing. And you need to somehow create new sales. Otherwise, a 10-year-old bike would be as good as a brand new one. You go, people will go, why do I need to update? It's exactly the same bike. It's got a different paint job. But really, it's the same. But oh no, no, the new bike's got some new aero thing. The UCI have changed the rules, so they've been able to do this, and they've changed the handlebar system. Like now, our handlebars are trendy now, and the white handlebars, and it's all integrated. So I need to buy a whole new piece, and and we may go from tubeless tyres that are hooked to the hookless tyres. So I need to change those those rims and tyres. I've got to buy different tyres and all this sort of stuff. So the manufacturers are continually bringing out new technology and that's why they keep us spending and it's a pretty good strategy and I must admit the marketing surrounding that works now when you go back to Mapdex's viewpoint on this who's trying to run a shop he has a lot of money tied up in inventory then he goes like this is just a pain in the neck for me because I need to have skills all of these different skills for all of the different technology that keeps changing and I need to be able to have computers that link to all of these new softwares. I need to understand Bluetooth technology because of all the new group sets are all gone electric. And I also need to have different rims, different types of sealant, different type of tyres, everything as the technology keeps changing in the tyre world as well. So he doesn't see that as beneficial to him and it just becomes a headache. But for the consumer, we want to be able to take our old bikes back to the bike shop and we want to be able to get them serviced because they work fine. Yeah, okay, maybe they don't give me, you know, 0.5 of a kilometre an hour faster at 45 k's, but the bike services for what I want to do. I'm a little bit overweight. I just want to ride with my, my buddies and we have a bit of a group ride. We have a bit of fun and it's a group ride, so we're not trying to beat everyone's ass. And that's what we enjoy. We don't need to have the latest bike. And my top-end bike from 10 years ago still does what I want it to do today. And I want to be able to take it into the bike shop and get it serviced. Now, let's just say that, all of the bike shops did what MapDeck did. We'd go into the bike shop with our 10-year-old S-Works whatever or Conago uh, C60 or C59 or whatever it is, and they go, oh, sorry, mate, we can't service this. And you go, why, why not? You go, oh, we don't keep any of that stock. We can't get any of that stock. We haven't even got the technology to work on that bike. You've got to buy a disc brake bike now, and you need to have integrated cabling, and you need to be running hookless rims because that's all that we support. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be that defined, but that's kind of his argument. As far as the consumers can, you go, well, my, there's nothing wrong with my bike. I just want it serviced, you know, and it just needs this replacing and that replacing, and then we're all good to go. And he goes, well, sorry, mate, I can't help you there. So that's where I see that it's all right to say, yeah, let's move to the new technology and I'm ready to move on. But when you move on, there's always more moving on. There's always more technology coming. There's always something the bike industry is bringing out that then isn't backward compatible or retro compatible. And they want to make the retro bikes obsolete so people then have to buy a new technology. And also they know the bike shops have to stock this new technology. So for them, once the, they've got the uh, requisition from the bike shop and it's moved to their shop, they've got their money. They don't care about if it's popular or not, or if you've got stock stuck on your shelf or you can't move it because we've made a new technology now, that's not their problem anymore. Anyway, guys, leave your comments down below. What's your thoughts on this? I can see MapDeck's argument and I'm putting a separate argument forward and I do like to be fully inclusive on my channel and in my comments of different opinions as long as it's not directed or outside of the topic of the video, then it won't be deleted. But if it's trolling, if it's attacking other people or if it's outside of the scope of what the video is about or, or road bicycles in general, it's just some, I don't know, relevant type of negative comment, then it will be deleted. Well, that's where I'm going to leave it, guys, and I'll see you next video.